and it was a 2-0 win for Manchester United. That does stop that run of draws in the competition, which had been three before this. We're going to welcome in Frank LeBoeuf, Julian Leron, and former Fulham, and also Villa centre-back, Zat Knight. Joining us for the first time here on ESPN FC, Shaka, you can sit down, so can Jan Agafiotov, because this <laughs> is definitely the tallest panellist we have ever had here on ESPN FC. Zat, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Tell us about well, tonight's game, Manchester United. What did you make of it? Um, it was a boring game. It was a boring game. Typ typical Man United. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you see, Leboff um, agrees with me. Now, it was um, the same old Man United. It was slow to start. They got, um, obviously, the first half was slow. Come to the second half, they got a goal early. I thought it was going to kick on. Um, gave them an opportunity to get back in, didn't take it. But the star of the show was um, Ahmed. I thought he'd done really well today. But overall, good result for Man United. But performance-wise, was weak. Yeah, I just like that the uh, defenders' union there sticking up for one another. Frank agreeing <laughs> with that, uh, but it's, especially in the first half as well, though. Frank, it was pretty flat, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's that was. I mean, the first sentence from that, you know, as a new panelist, was spot on. <laughs> that, that was boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really because we are paid for watching games that we keep on watching games because you have to switch off when you see that. And it comes from Manchester United, but it also comes from uh, Power, Power K, uh, and, uh, and they didn't do the job as well. We saw almost nothing. And uh, that was really appalling performance from Manchester United. And uh, it's time for Ruben uh, Amorim to come over and, to, and for us to see if there is something that he can, you know, improve before uh, achieving anything. But uh, they are far away from being the Manchester United we used to know, that's for sure, but not even the good Manchester United. I mean, Ahmad Diallo mm. had two great things to, uh, that he did, but otherwise, yes, again, I go back to that, boring. Uh, let's get to Ahmed Diallo, though, if we can, Jules, because obviously with Amarim watching, he did himself a few favours tonight, surely? Yeah, I think so. And it, it felt like he wanted to show something and prove something, which is right. There's a new manager come in that plays in a completely different formation to what we saw tonight. And if you think about the two tens that Amarim usually plays behind the striker, you think that potentially of all the white players that United have, Rashford, Garnacho, Anthony, Ahmad, then maybe Ahmad is the most suited to play a bit more inside. He's got this incredible technical ability. He's quick. He could easily play as a 10 behind the striker. So inside 10 could be more for him than maybe a Garnacho or, or Rashford. So I think he was good. He needs to be consistent because he started the season quite well. And like, like we said, he, he then came out of the team. But Ruben Amorim was surely watching tonight. And I think he would have liked what he saw from Ahmad. What do you think he would have been thinking overall after watching this game tonight, Shaka? Um, where, where's, where's the room for improvement in this squad? And, and, and listen, while there were changes to the two centre-halves, this was a, a pretty strong Manchester United team. And I think everybody is, is, is right in seeing that, at the very least, up until the opening goal from Ahmad Diallo, this, there really was nothing to, to write home about from, from Manchester United. Granted, Bruno Fernandes, great ball to pick out Diallo. Um, but from, from, from there on in, I, I think the, great, the game opened up a lot, as, as you'd expect. Power go behind, they start taking chances. Uh, and maybe it, it became a little bit of a game then. But before that, th there really wasn't a lot, a lot to go on from, from a Manchester United perspective. Um, Amarim looking, in, looking, looking on at, at this one has got to start asking questions as to, as to who fits where. But while that's all well and good in a, in a vacuum, as, as we've said here time and time again, I think moving some of these players that may be excess to, to his requirements will prove, will prove difficult. So while, again, in a vacuum, starting to figure things out, um, it's, it's not going to be that easy. I mean, how long does he stay there, though? He's in this form. He's got to still be on the focus of so many teams that wanted him before right now. Yeah, that's right. He was outstanding. He's been great since he arrived, really. He played up front with Icardi tonight. They had uh, Mertens as a 10 behind, so a very attacking front three. And he worked really, really well, and he's been great in the league, too. He's got this release close in January kicking on. So if a big club comes, we know the 75 million euros is the price for that release close. So it'd be very interesting to see. You see the formation there. Very interesting to see what happens to Victor Ozyman come January, because by then, he would easily probably be on 20 goals 
in the in the season for God's right between the league and the the conference the, the yeah the, the the Europa League sorry so I don't know if he's ready to leave in January I don't know if somebody will come with the 75 million in January but he's showing that really it was just a matter of time before he would be scoring a lot of goals for Galatasaray. Uh, just going on with Postacoglu as well, Shaka. He said we had simple solutions out there to keep the ball. It wasn't that hard. We just needed to be stronger. And, and, and in Spurs' defence here, and, and while I, I get the point that Postacoglu, is, uh, I guess, is trying to make about um, having a, a full squad and everybody playing at a certain level, Spurs made seven changes here. They, they brought a lot of, of young players, a lot of fringe players in, and against a, a, a very good Galatasaray team, as, as it showed. So, on, on the one hand, you want to be critical, but then you can't really kind of give them the wholesale changes that were made. And then, to that point, and uh, as Frank mentioned, they go down to 10 men, and all of a sudden, thanks in, in part to just some of the substitutions that, that uh, Postacoglu makes, Spurs do not drop off any at all, and as a matter of fact, get, get one back. So you take the positives with some of the negatives that, that kind of come with, with, with making so, some of those changes. So I'm, I'm less critical of, of Spurs' performance and, and multi point. Spurs lost today than, than Sir Sidney, um, Zatan, and, and Frank had been. This is just, I, again, kind of given where Spurs were, given the results on the weekend, given what's to come for them. I sympathise a little bit. OK, let's take a look at the table then in the Europa League and where that leaves Spurs, this result, uh, still managing to stay in that top eight as it stands right now. Galatasaray in third after that game. It's Lazio riding high at the top of the table. I mean, how long does he stay there, though? He's in this form. He's got to still be on the focus of so many teams that wanted him before right now. Yeah, that's right. He was outstanding. He's been great since he arrived, really. He played up front with Icardi tonight. They had uh, Mertens as a 10 behind, so a very attacking front three. And he worked really, really well, and he's been great in the league, too. He's got this release close in January kicking on. So if a big club come, we know the 75 million euros is the price for that release close. So it would be very interesting to see. You see the formation there. Very interesting to see what happens to Victor Ozyman come January, because by then, he would easily probably be on 20 goals uh, in the in the season for God's right between the league and the the conference the, the yeah the, the the Europa League sorry so I don't know if he's ready to leave in January I don't know if somebody will come with the 75 million in January but he's showing that really it was just a matter of time before he would be scoring a lot of goals for Galatasaray. Uh, just going on with Postacoglu as well, Shaka. He said we had simple solutions out there to keep the ball. It wasn't that hard. We just needed to be stronger. In, 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 in Spurs' defence here, and, and while I, I get the point that Postacoglu, uh, I guess, is trying to make about um, having a, a full squad and everybody playing at a certain level, Spurs made seven changes here. They, they brought a lot of, of young players, a lot of fringe players in, and against a, a, a very good Galatasaray team, as, as it showed. So, on, on the one hand, you want to be critical, but then you can't really kind of given the wholesale changes that were made. And then, to that point, and uh, as Frank mentioned, they go down to 10 men, and all of a sudden, thanks in, in part to just some of the substitutions that, that uh, Postacoglu makes, Spurs do not drop off any at all, and as a matter of fact, get, get, get one back. So you take the positives with some of the negatives that, that kind of come with, with, with making so, some of those changes. So I'm, I'm less critical of, of Spurs' performance and, and multi-point. Spurs lost today than than Sir Sidney, um, Zatan and, and Frank had been. This is just, I, again, kind of given where Spurs were, given the results on the weekend, given what's to come for them, I sympathise a little bit. OK, let's take a look at the table then in the Europa League and where that leaves Spurs, this result, uh, still managing to stay in that top eight as it stands right now. Galatasaray in third after that game. It's Lazio riding high at the top of the table.